holy war. They're living their lives. How is it harming your life? Somebody's got to tell them they're not going to heaven if they keep living that filthy lifestyle. For you to say that God hates anybody, you'll be going to hell. Ignorant fag reaction. Could you refrain from that language? I believe in hell, Ricky. This is still my show. It's your show, it. and I'm leaving. God is my judge, not you. <laughs> On today's show, you'll meet a man who wants to wipe out the entire homosexual community and believes that gays are worthy of death. He's on a crusade against gays. going on in the town of Topeka, Kansas that many people don't like, but few have been able to stop. A minister by the name of Fred Phelps is trying to drive out the entire gay community through vicious attacks and accusations on the gay townspeople. Many say his approach is monstrous and hateful, but he, does, he says he does it all for the love of the Lord. He actively pickets at funerals of young people who have died of AIDS. Let's take a look. If you think it's something extraordinary to pick at the funeral, to stand quietly on a public sidewalk with a Bible verse, if you think that's outlandish, what would you think? If we went out to the graveyard and dug up the body of the fag that died of AIDS and burned it to ashes and scattered the ashes all over downtown Topeka. Please welcome Reverend Phelps and a member of his Westboro Baptist Church, Charles. Reverend, why are you waging an anti-gay holy war? Well, you know, that's colorful language, my dear, but all I'm doing is what I've been doing for the past 46 years without any exception every Sunday, and that's preaching the Bible. For some reason, it's got on the front burner now, and I think it's because the fags have come, as they say, out of the closet, beginning at Stonewall, okay. and pushed it in everybody's face. Excuse me. Before you go any further, I'd like to just say, I don't know the words you use in your home. I just don't find the words that you're using here appropriate. Well, you're my, in my dear. Home right now. I am a Bible preacher, remember, 46 years. I'm well I aware. use Bible words, and I cite you Amos 4, 11. I've overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were as a faggot plucked from the burning. Same thing in Zechariah 3, 2. It is an elegant metaphor that describes these creatures the way God intended them to be elegant described. Elegant metaphor. Anybody want to comment on that? <laughs> yes, stand up. Yes. The f I believe that faggot means bundle of sticks. Well, that's why it's a metaphor. And just as those sticks characterize three waves, they burn quickly, they burn hot, and they burn long, they fuel the fires of nature, even so, the ancient sodomites fueled the fires of God's wrath just as God promised it would do again near the end of this age if we don't stop them. Okay. It's an elegant right. metaphor. Okay, you say you're a preacher of God, Preacher right? of the Bible. Preacher of the Bible. Okay. Never missed a Sunday. Why do you protest in this fashion? You go over to funerals. Don't you have any compassion for the family members? Got a lot, of a lot of compassion. And I want them to go to heaven. And somebody's got to tell them they're not going to heaven if they keep living that filthy lifestyle. And there's a verse that applies on some have compassion, making a difference. Others say by terrifying them, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. It's that kissy-poo preaching that's sending this country to hell in a faggot's handbasket. Right. Kissy-poo preaching? Yes. <laughs> this country's going to hell because preachers are no longer preaching the Bible. 
and preaching hellfire and brimstone and warning sinners to flee from the wrath to come. They're not friends of mankind who do those lying sermons. Lying sermons, yes. <laughs> For you to say that God hates anybody, you'll be going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Uh, God. Oh, man, no! Oh, no! Now, there, there's a... There's a truly ignorant man. He doesn't know one thing about the Bible, probably hates right. the Bible, and probably hates God. How do you know he doesn't know anything about the Bible? I know because if he says that God doesn't hate anybody, he's never even cracked the Bible. That's right. More talk about the hatred right. of God than about the love of God. Yes. Um, fag <laughs> usually refers to a, a male homosexual. I was wondering if you have a, a pet well, name it, for lesbians. Well, it usually, it usually does. However, that's the modern vernacular of things. Anciently, it referred to all sodomites, and I'll give you the verse. Uh, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that was as unseemly and receiving in themselves the wrath of God. They deserve to be told that. All right, yes. I just want to, we have a special word for you. The word is psycho-Christian. Well, that's, uh... Thank you! A typical ignorant fag reaction. Typical ignorant fag reaction. I'm going to ask you reaction. again. I'm going to ask you. I rest my case. He agrees gonna, he's an ignorant fag. I'm going to ask you again. Please, could you refrain from that language while you're here? Well, my dear, then they I won't. They call themselves I, I, that. Pardon me. I will not. You are not. I will not change the Bible word to suit a host on a talk show. I'm a preacher. I thought you knew that. If you don't want me preaching what the Bible says, you shouldn't have invited me. All right. Who else are also sinners? Have you never sinner? even cracked the Bible, uh, Ricky? Yes, I have. Listen, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The but am I a sinner because I'm friends with gay people? Well, you're a sinner because you're descended from Adam and Eve. That's called the fall. You're depraved. You need salvation. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ came. And, uh, <laughs> Hi. Um... <laughs> I know that there are a lot of men of the cloth out there that don't practice what they preach because I was sexually molested as a child by a priest. And I find nothing wrong with the gay community. We pick We're, at those They're priests. a loving community. I find a problem with the religious community teaching kids and people what's wrong when they're... There's, there's nothing wrong we, with us. There's something wrong with religion uh, today. We pick at those priests. We picket each church in Topeka and Kansas City and everywhere we get a line on some fag priest like that who molest children. Why and we you... have big signs that say this is a fag church and the priest or preacher here is a fag preacher. So I'm sympathetic towards your view. Why do you care? What is it bothering you? If they're living their lives, how is it harming your life? Very simple answer. Simple Bible answer, like uh, Luke 17, 28, as it was in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. So shall it be in the day when the Son of Man cometh. I'm talking about the end of the world that all the churches of every creed once believed and preached. And the evidence of it is when the fags proliferate and become respectable and accepted as it was in the days of Sodom. So shall it be in that day. I'm a Bible preacher. Yes. That's Old Testament stuff. I'm wondering I if... I quoted you out of the New Testament. Talking, but, uh, I just quoted you Luke 17, 28. I think if Christ were here, he'd be taking Testament a bullet stuff. to you. You don't know like the difference the money between the Old Testament you're preaching hate. and the New Testament? You're preaching hate. You, of course because I'm preaching hate. Because your obsession with this must sinners. come with something that's going on in your in mind. What do you think, do you think it is? A major closet case is what I think. You don't believe in hell. A lot Charles, of fags don't believe in hell, you know. Charles is grinning. Charles is having hell. a great time. Charles, I want to hear how you feel. Um, well, you think God is an angry God. Why? Def well, because the Bible is full of verses which state exactly that. My God is a loving, compassionate you don't God. Worship, you don't worship the one and true living God. Let me tell you what God you worship. You worship your... That's what you worship. You worship your... And you vote your... And you talk to them. That's what you worship. That's You're speaking Phil to me? That's Philippians 3.19. That's right. You are That's totally out of line. line. <laughs> oh, you are completely offensive, yes. <laughs> well, I would, I would like to say that the tape that you showed I found to be very upsetting because 
I've uh, attended dozens, I'm 31 years old, and I've attended dozens of services like that for my friends and my family and people that I love. And I'm a person living with AIDS, and so, you know, someday that might be my service. That you're well, you're going to hell, my friend, and in. I can smell the brimstone. What do you, what do you think when he says that to you? I can smell the brimstone in this room now. The only thing I you really want to... You need to repent like the excuse thief me, on the excuse cross. Excuse me, can you speak, please? Yes. The only thing I really... When I see you up there grinning and you think it's something that's funny, that makes it's me funny sick that because you have no idea what our lives are like. reaction when the Bible is preached. This country didn't used to be that way. For 200 years, nearly every preacher in every mainline church believed and preached what I believe and preach. Well, I would All just, their creeds hold I would that. like to say to you, shame on you, shame and I don't know you. how you You're sleep the fag. at night. I'm not dying of AIDS. All right, we're going to take a break. You're the fag dying of All AIDS. All right, excuse me, Reverend. When we come back, we will meet a man whose mother was a minister, yet he turned out to be gay. We'll be right back after this. says that from the time he was little, he knew he was gay. And even though he grew up with ministers as a parent, it was not enough to change him from being gay. He's currently featured in a film called Sex Is, a celebration of gay sex. I want you also to meet Mary Griffith. Mary used to think like Reverend Phelps. She believed her, her gay son was a sinner. She listen, listened to her pastor and told her son to pray to God and he will change you. Yet Bobby felt he could not change and killed himself instead. He was only 20 years old. Mary, you brought something to read to uh, Reverend Phelps? Yes, it's an entry that Bobby wrote in his diary. He wrote in his diary quite often from the time he was 17 because there really wasn't anyone for him to talk to. And that was his comfort. Uh, he wrote, Why did you do this to me, God? Am I going to hell? That's the annoying question that's always drilling little holes in the back of my mind. Please don't send me to hell. I'm really not that bad, am I? I want to be good. I want to amount to something. I need your seal of approval. If I had that, I would be happy. Life is so cruel and unfair. Uh, I truly believe with all my heart that homosexuality was something that had to be cured or Bobby would burn in hell. Um, Bobby went to counseling. Bobby prayed. Uh, well, basically, our kids were raised in the church from the cradle up. And we learned about Bobby when he was 16. And I'm sure Bobby had been praying long before that. Uh, I never gave up hope that God would heal Bobby because it would be very diabolical to sentence someone to this horrible punishment and then not cure him of the thing that God supposedly hates. Uh, what do you think of what Reverend Phelps is saying here? Well, I think, like I was, he is very homophobic um, and ignorant. I was very ignorant. I do, I do understand his mentality, where he's coming from. I, I will give him the benefit of the doubt by saying that he possibly is really interested in people's souls. It took me a year and a half to realize, uh, I suppose my moment of truth came when I began to read the Bible as an observer rather than a follower. And I looked and I saw all these horrible things that this God of wrath was supposed to have done and it crossed my mind that I hadn't been able to use on my own for some 40 years uh, that a heck of a lot of things are cause and effect. Earthquakes happen, people are struck by lightning, plagues happen, and God has nothing to do with it. That is the way nature is. You said that Reverend Phelps, you just said that Reverend Phelps is out to, to help people. He wants to cure people. Is that true, Reverend Phelps? Well, of course. I'm sorry that she's lost her about... faith. I'm sorry that she no longer believes the Bible. But she'd better quit worrying about one mistake she made and not preaching the truth to that son and start worrying now about her own soul because she shortly must and we all shortly may appear before that great God who wrote that Bible and who has said, you're going to hell if you don't repent. The message is very simple. Turn or burn. May I okay. say I'm a messenger. Yes. yes. Um, I uh, recently read a statement by uh, Bob Barker, Freedom from Religion. I'm not condoning that. It said that if no one had ever challenged religious authority and the scriptures, 
there would be no democracy, there would be no public schools, there would be no women's rights. Um, women. Pursuit of, pursuit of science and medicine. And if you're going to go to hell, don't blame Bob oh, Barker for telling you lies. And you know better. Be, just let me have my say, please. There would be no pursuit of science or medicine. And my favorite that I added myself, there would be no laws against child abuse. And if you turn to the Old Testament in 2 Kings uh, chapter 1, verses 23-24, you will find out that the prophet Elijah, because some little children teased him about his bald head, he called two female bears from the woods Lying to on devour, the Bible. To devour, Lying on the Bible. No, not, to devour Elisha those children. Elisha it was, not Elijah, and he didn't I call the for the prophet. bears, my Excuse dear. Me, I'm with me. God but you me shouldn't, shouldn't right. misquote scripture, and you Elisha. shouldn't lie Excuse me. on God. Hello, Women. Excuse me. Elisha. You may Elisha. be a reverend, but this is still my show. It was the... Well, The Reverend Phelps cannot but deal. He cannot you deal with the truth. You cannot Why deal you with leaving? the truth. Why you are you can't leaving? Deal with the way to respond to this stuff, though. You can't. All right, let's take a commercial break. We'll be right back after this. As Reverend Phelps walked off, so did our cameras. Stay with us for clips of our backstage conversation and find out what happened. Okay, let's go backstage now for some excerpts of our conversation with Reverend Phelps as he explains why he walked off. I'm not going to, uh, I'm reasonable, I'll listen as long as it's reasonable. But when it's time now, she wanted to talk another 15 minutes. This is give and take stuff, it's bantering stuff. That's what nature of the beast. I've been on lots of these things. I'm not new at this. I know. Well, if you want to just let these people sit out there and talk for seven minutes, and then us talk for seven minutes, I thought this was banter, and that's where excitement and ratings come from. Yeah, and I only do this because I think I've got a message that this world ought to hear, and I'm willing to put up with all kinds of stuff. We've been assaulted and battered over 700 times, you know. So if you've got security here, some of those people look very dangerous to me. Well, he finally agreed to rejoin our guests on stage after we assured him equal time, so here we go. We've talked things out, and we're going to give everybody equal opportunity to speak. Reverend, you wanted to respond to what Mary was saying, please, briefly. Well, is it Mary you say? Mm -hmm. Didn't you want I'm to respond to Mary? I'm very sorry that she's abandoned the faith of her fathers. She's now like a ship on a stormy, dark sea without a pole star to guide her, without a rudder. She doesn't know where she's going or what she's doing, and very shortly now she's going to die in the natural course of things. And the way she's doing now is it's going to split hell wide open i'm a best friend i'm the fag's best friend i say repent turn or burn so where is bobby now her son yes if what she has said is true and he died impenitent and without jesus christ he's burning in hell now but and there's no question a, about it uh, and he lift up his eyes being in torment mm. in hell and see if abraham afar off and lazarus in his bosom and pleaded <laughs> for a drop of water to touch his tongue, saying, I'm tormented in this flame. I believe in hell, Ricky. Okay. Yes, Mary? Uh, what, the, really the catalyst for this was the fact that I was concerned that Bobby was probably burning in this lake of fire by this wrath of God that he knows. I, um, I read that uh, because Bobby's a Christian, he won't be sent to hell. But then, further back in Revelations, I believe it's, Revelation uh, 5, 3, it says that if you don't overcome, your name will be blotted out of the book of life. And so then I read back a little bit more, and it says that if your name is not found in the book of life, you'll be cast in the lake of fire. And so that's when I decided to read this book and see what it was really all about. Okay. Bobby is not in hell. I don't she think... She no longer believes the Bible. Yes, what do you want to say? Yeah. I'm a Christian, and you say that you're not you a Christian cannot... starting like that. Excuse me. You I am a Christian. Bible. You don't tell me what no. I am, okay? Starting out you like that. You shut up and you let me talk, okay? If you say you're a 
you're a Christian and you're, you're a, not priest, a Christian, you're the biggest one here. You're not a Christian. You know what? And furthermore, I'm you probably are living a very TV. sinful, immoral life. You know what? Life. The Lord accepts you. What and you because are. And if that. you repent, and because that's that. when you are accepted up there. And this. And if you know what? The way you're talking, you're not going to be accepted up there because the Lord only accepts those who respect Show him. Fact you're not showing repented. respect. There is you're no not showing there respect is no because there is talking no. about gay people <laughs> and one respect, okay? Hysteria so you're won't reverend. change you're the word of God, reverend. my dear. You are pocketing money. You're just a fanatic, ranting, raving guy. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne, I want you to jump in. What do you think of what's I... being said here? Well, uh, first of all, I'm going to object strongly to the use of the word fag. It's not my show, but I'm a gay man, and I'm not a fag. You are a fag, according to the Bible. And I'm sorry for you. Well, I'm, that offends I'm you. truly sorry for you. I, that I first must you're say a fag. that offends well, me. Well, that's tough, my friend. But what you have to understand is that the Bible offends a lot of people until they repent and make peace with God. I urge you to repent I've and made make peace, peace with, with God. God. I have a relationship with Christ. Uh, you I mean, have, you a, have real a relationship with Christ. As a gay man, I have a relationship with Christ. Your God and is you your can't record. deny me that. God is my judge, not you. <laughs> If these people, these fags, were truly gay, according to the meaning of that word, why did her son kill herself, himself? They aren't gay. They aren't gay at all. They're not gay. I can answer that. Yes, Mary. I can answer that. Bobby gave up on love, and I don't see any of it sitting here with these two men. Well, this is the God that is keeping us from Yes, what do you want to say? Reverend, what I wanted to say is that I noticed you took a lot of time and selectively red, white, and blue. Um, what I, um, what I also noticed is I'm that although, the the world, although you've taken a lot of time with like your that. wardrobe, um, it does not, your Can views you do not reflect, your views do not reflect the American public. And Can you please, we're giving you a chance to talk, please let our, let our, pan, our people in the audience speak as well. To talk about what I'm wearing in sweatbands. She's getting to her point, I mean, if you would just listen. I level of the absurd, You're not listening, Reverend, way. we're listening, Reverend, excuse me. Reverend, we are trying, we are listening to you, we are trying to learn from you. We want to learn what you believe. When you're losing the argument on the merits, then you resort to silliness, like talking about the color of sweatbands. She's getting to her point if you would just listen. Yes, Reverend, the point is that you are advocating hate, and God does not advocate hate. And how many John times, 3, 16, how many more says, times so God you want to make that point? the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah, I got something for him right now, here. How many more you times do you want to oh, make that quiet, silly I'm point? talking now. You're going to go from to one Ricky to the Day. other, You're letting so some loud mouth threaten you need people. To get a you, you get a life. You get from one to the other. You need to get a life for your own. You like stop that. worrying about gay people. How old no, you don't matter. Ricky. Ricky. Uh, Ricky. When you, you let two of them go, you let two yes. people in a row talk without letting us let, respond. Let me say something. I'm letting you respond. Charles, please respond. They are repeating themselves. Can we elevate this dialogue a little bit? Excuse me, Charles, please all, audience, let's just try to give them, Charles wants to, to respond. To answer the young lady over here, what do you do with Romans 9.13 that says, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I not disliked, not his sins disliked, but hated. He hated Esau, God hates. And to you, you have no room to talk about respect, talking to a 63-year-old man like a pistol. <laughs> respect. Yes. Yes. This man, this man has more wisdom and more intelligence than this room. Everyone in this room is combined. All right, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Are you tired? One or both of your parents are gay? 
Do you think their gay lifestyle is ruining your life? If so, call and you could be a guest on The Ricky Lake Show. Call 1-800-906-0021 or 212-889-7465. What do you think about AIDS? Ma'am. What do you think about AIDS, the disease? Well, you you talking about the fag disease that they used to call GRIDS? The name of it, the name of it originally was GRIDS, gay related immunodeficiency yeah, syndrome. Yeah, but that is no longer. The you know the heterosexuals no, are transmitting the fags disease have way got more political, than homosexuals. The fags have got the political power to control the agenda in this government, and that's further evidence that it has, has achieved the level of ancient... It's further evidence that it has achieved the level of ancient Sodom and Gomorrah when this country is now bound to this filthy fag agenda. What do you have to say to that, Wayne? I have AIDS. You've said uh, that, and I've said you're going to hell, so get on with it. No, I, I haven't said that yet. Uh, I have AIDS. And if you think the gay agenda, the homosexual agenda, is doing something about AIDS, they're the only ones who are doing anything about it yeah, because the government ain't doing nothing. Yeah, they're spreading and nobody what else they're is. doing about it, like fornicating jackrabbits on the prairie, and until that stops, there'll be no cure for it. Get your facts right, man. That ain't, that's not true. You've got that's your facts as messed true. up as you do your knowledge of the scripture, my friend. Oh, yes. I grew up in church. I grew up in the Church of God Sanctified. <laughs> My mother is Mother Willie B. Moore, who well, is a minister. Well, I wish that you would not get in these personalities, or I'll tell you about my 13 children and 30 grandchildren, all of whom believe the Bible. So how many, I have to ask you, excuse me, Reverend, how many of your parishioners are actual members other than your children and family? Well, is that some... Is that some impertinent question? Or I'm asking. I'm that, curious. Is I'm, that interesting to you? Yes, it is. You would like to know. A tree is known by the fruit it bears. Uh, you think there's something uh, sinister about a man that believes the Bible and raises his children in the nurture? Not at all. Not at all. Nurture, I'm just wondering how big your following is, that's the, all. And raises his children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord such that when they reach the age of majority, 11 of them being lawyers, they choose to suffer affliction with the people of God okay. rather than to enjoy the place of Reverend, if you could just answer the question, why, how many members are in your why, congregation? Why would you make fun of I'm the not fact fun. that most of my children fear God and believe what their father that, preaches? You're missing the point. You are not listening to me. I'm asking you how many members are in your congregation. That's no. all. And, uh, and why, pardon me, and why would you uh, make, by implication, fun of people like Charles Hockenbarger, whose grandparents were members of our church, whose parents were members of our members since they were born, and who, with his five brothers and sisters, has never missed a Sunday. But well, it is a... It is an hour show. Okay, yes, what do you want to say? But it is an what you all want to say is I'm a question. mother who lost a son a year ago. It's the year tomorrow, and I want to say I, he was going to programs and everything like that. <laughs> I was told he was gay, and he was worried about that. I, don't, I didn't care. It's my son, and I don't have him today, and that's all that matters. You because it's a person in the heart. Thank if you had raised him in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, you would still have him. But you didn't raise him that way. Okay, because let me... if you'd raised him right, he wouldn't have been a fag. You're yeah. Wait, how should she have raised him? She should have raised him in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, teaching him, teaching that child that but this is the love Wayne? of God Wayne that we keep his commandments. With, with a minister as a parent. He was, he was raised with a kissy poo me, minister. I don't know what his mother was preaching in the first place. Or Female sure, preachers, the, uh, the fe a female preacher is against the Bible standard anyway. There never oh, had been such a thing. Oh, 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 oh. I want to introduce my next guest. When Kathy first thought her son was gay, she hoped that both religion and therapy could cure him. However, in his junior year of college, Joshua told his parents he was gay. Joshua says he tried desperately not to be gay, but soon realized it wasn't a choice. Kathy, what do you have to say? 
Well, uh, hard to know what to say. I, I feel really sad that there's such hate uh, there's coming, the hate. coming from a minister. There's the hate. So, but I... I sure. Sure you do. I think... Uh, yes, I, you're I, not a camera, you're, you're not, not a camera, ma'am. Yes, one of the, I think one of the issues that we have to confront is that being gay is not a choice. If it is not uh, a choice, if it is not a choice, <laughs> then it is, it is created that God created maybe, my child maybe being just the way disposed. he created your child. Let maybe, me tell, can I tell you maybe what? Maybe being disposed, to, maybe being exposed disposed to that sin can I, is not a choice. Can I, can I continue? Acting it out can is I a choice. Tell you, can I tell you what my child was exposed to? You see, I thought there was something wrong with my son, too. Can you look at me? Look, ladies, say what you've got to say, make your point, and I'll respond to it. Don't tell me who to look at, okay? No, I just said, can you? I didn't tell you. We thought that there There's was something wrong with our son. There's an important issue she's raised ought to be spoken to. There's, there, we thought that there was something wrong with our son. We saw him as being in some way different. We are, my husband is a psychiatrist. I'm a psychiatric nurse. We tried in every way we could to change my son, which means that we put him in psychoanalysis four times a week for five years to try to change this part of him. When he was an adolescent, he was also in psychotherapy. It was ridiculous. It was wrong thinking. It was abusive. It was abusive. Abusive to try to change people's sexual now, orientation. Wait a, minute. wait a minute. You said if we came back out when somebody made a point like that, we could reply. Now you're hurrying over to two more fags. I have something to say. Uh, look, Mary, Mary, you don't I let think us you're great for coming on this show. Wait your turn. Mary, Mary, I think turn. you're great you for coming on this show. I get one turn to that You, I feel sorry for you that you're following a man like Look, this. And I'm you've got a lot of hate. I don't know what Bobby you're reading, but I, I was raised a Christian talking. since I was 13 years old, and I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. But what? what you're making right now is you're when? condemning these people. When? And you're not God. If when? you were God, you'd have that choice. But you're when? not. So I think you're better. Sit back and reread your Bible. All right, now you've let two of them make It's your long... chance. You know what, Reverend? It's your chance to reply to what she said. And what he said. Go ahead. Now you got two replies. The truth of the matter is that she's just confessed her sins and her husband's sins on national television, <laughs> pretending that it was appropriate to send that child to get his sin matter fixed to some goofy, demon-possessed psychiatrist. Look. What about me? The point here is... What about Joshua? The point here is that it may be no choice that you have those sinful impulses. But I'll tell you, all Adam's seed have sinful impulses. You don't excuse them, and you don't pass laws saying it's all right. You resist them. And that's the message that the gospel brings, that the grace of God has now appeared teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly. That's what he should have done. Okay. So I should deny my happiness because it's written in the Bible. If you want to go to heaven, you will, buddy. That's if right. you're going to be in heaven, right. I prefer we got to take a break. <laughs> Next up, a young man and woman who say they are gay and are going to heaven. Please stay with us. Well, I was afraid there just wasn't room for another one. But now, after completing our first season on the air, I am glad to say that you have helped make us the fastest growing talk show ever. This has been an unbelievable year, and I want to thank you for watching and letting me be a part of your lives. Please meet Heidi. Heidi says she's outraged at the, mes at the message that Pastor Phelps is spreading and says he is nothing but a crazy, manipulative, religious flunky. Also, also meet Aaron. He says the Reverend is doing nothing but spreading a hateful, one-sided message. Heidi, what's a flunky? <laughs> um, well, I think the most important thing here is not to really sort of address what Mr. Phelps is saying, but to talk to the people in the audience and to the people watching, and that is, is that 
It's our responsibility to respond to hatred like this. And that means that we have to not be afraid of the things he's saying as lesbians, as gay men, and people who support lesbians and gay men, because I'm sure there's all those things here. And um, that it, I'm not afraid of him. I'm not afraid of what he says. He's going to keep saying all these hateful, horrible things, no matter what I say, no matter what anybody else out here says. And there are people, I mean, maybe not to his extreme, but are people that think that homosexuality is wrong. Is there anybody in the audience that feels that way? We're all being so politically correct. You do, sir? Okay, stand up. Yes, you feel that homosexuality is wrong? Yes, I do. Uh, I, I, I partially agree with the Reverend. Uh, I don't believe that homosexuality, uh, homosexuality is correct. It's, um, it's killing people with AIDS. I mean, if, if I'm... Killing people who are straight as well. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is if, if a man makes love with another woman, then you, you, if she's clean and he's clean, there is no AIDS. But if a clean homosexual and another... It's just not true these days. The way they're having performing sex is not the legal way to do it. Anybody tell I mean, uh, he, you know, he seems, you're a well-intentioned person, I'm sure, but you, you don't really understand medically what's happening with HIV. And part of the problem, part of the reason that's true, is that people like Mr. Phelps are spreading lies and misinformation about a disease that we can all protect ourselves now from. Now, there's three speeches. You've allowed three speeches, nothing out of us. But have you noticed that Heidi just joined in? You were here from the top of the show, Reverend. Three speeches. Okay, there's going to be one more right here. Okay. Uh, I'd like to say this to, uh, to the lady. That's the last one. That's the last one. I'd like to say this to the lady. Yes, I'd like to say this to the lady that lost her son. Do you see homosexuality, rather than in form of male or female, as being biological or something more that's uh, behavior? Because they've been having reports now that they believe it's genetic. Oh. What, is it, what, what if it Can is genetic, that? Reverend? I want to get to the Reverend because he wants to speak. I know There's that. There's only one Bible standard here, and it's irrelevant what anybody else or any other culture thinks or says if you believe the Bible. That Bible standard is one man, one woman, one lifetime, and all sexual connections outside that Bible standard are sinful. And the verse is Hebrews 13:4. And those people are called whoremongers, and whoremongers and adulterers, it is said there, will burn in hell forever. Now, all this is irrelevant talk if you believe the Bible. You're going to hell, my friends. Turn or burn. Aaron, you want to say? If, if that is the case, I myself will choose to burn. I am not going to live in a world where I have to deal with people like him who are spreading hate and damage, <laughs> destroying families. I would much rather live with my friends here who can create their own family and live in love and understanding. And go to hell. Be right back. Hi, we're back. You are represented with an Episcopal, Episcopal church. What do you think of what's being said? Well. Mr. Phelps certainly isn't representing the Bible or Christianity as, as it's known. Uh, the, I, I'm not a preacher. I'm a lawyer. Uh, Mr. Phelps used to be a lawyer, but he was disbarred. And By he was disbarred. He was disbarred. He was disbarred for, for harassing witnesses By, and distorting testimony. And I think in the same way in he has harassed people here act and has distorted the scriptures. That was declared unconstitutional and, and, by and, the federal court. And as Shakespeare court. said, um, even Satan can quote scripture to his own purposes. And that's exactly what's happening here. Now, yes. this Hi. ignorant, crooked lawyer, if he knows what the law is, oh, knows knows that it was a, a state court speak. that Let disbarred me in 79 and the federal court declared that it was unconstitutional. He knew that, but he thought he would take a cheap shot. And the truth of the matter is that that state court is presided over by a 350-pound bull dyke. Now, as to his... As to his Episcopalian connection, their chief bishop, a man named Otis Charles, two weeks ago, 67 years old, dean of their school of religion, finally came out and admitted he was a fag and had been a practicing fag for 40 years. Those okay, Episcopalian uh, religion students. Reverend. You're a pervert, my okay, friend. Reverend. A crooked lawyer pervert. Okay, you've spoken. Yes. 
if he's criminal, you were disbarred, and you just uh, proved that you're turning people. It. Don't How you many interrupt times me, you, you ignorant tell that ass! Lie. You shut up! How dare you interrupt me? All right, let's not let's not contribute. Uh, let's not contribute to the name calling, please. Lies. That you are turning you people there. away from God. There's evidence on right there. Television. Okay. He Can we please? Lying Reverend, fag, Reverend. And he shows it all over his face. Okay, you're not on the mic, yes, sir. Infused with the fag mentality. Okay, yes. I wanted to know that how would he feel if his son was gay or had AIDS or something? How would he react? What's the relevancy of that? You think that would change? You think that would change the word of God? And it's very difficult to answer these silly questions when you got this howling mob of violent fags. Excuse me, it just seems, Reverend, that you have no compassion howling for anybody. Howling mob of violent fags. We need to take a break. We'll be right back. Really, really want a boy. What happens if you have a girl? I want a girl. My mother wants a girl. You're having a beautiful little. When Daddy Only Wants a Boy, Thursday on Ricky Lake. For those who may question the value of putting someone like Reverend Phelps on television, let me give you a piece of information. In June of 1994, a massive gay celebration will take place in New York City, honoring the 25th anniversary of the Stonewall Riot in Greenwich Village. Reverend Fred Phelps has bought his plane ticket and has made his hotel reservations. Like it or not, we will be hearing more from this man. If you are gay or think you are gay and are not accepted by your community, friends or family, please talk to someone about it. Support is only a phone call away. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Promotional fees have been paid by the following. Want to be a part of our live studio audience? All you have to do is write for tickets. Please include your name, address, and daytime phone number. Write Ricky Lake Tickets, 401 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016.